Jenny, are you there? Can we talk? Oh, hello. Cynthia, was it? I'm on my company break now, so I'm okay for ten minutes or so. Oh, I see. You're talking to your future, possible mother-in-law, and you give me a time limit to talk? That has nothing to do with it. It's just that this is the only opportunity for a little free time. I'm really busy the rest of the day. I need this break. But if you are going to get along with me in the future, I recommend that you make me your priority. Uh, I really can't make such a promise. Excuse me? Anyway, what's this about? I don't have much time left on my break. I have to shut off my phone when my break ends, so I would appreciate it if you could get on with it. Your precious little break, huh? All right. Well, your attitude is part of it, too, so yes, let's get on with it. I'm contacting you because, well, I want you to quit your job. Pardon me? I said, if you want to marry my son, I want you to quit your job. Uh, why should I do that? Because it would interfere with you being a good housewife, that's why. If you can't do that, well, I will not allow you to marry my son. I would ask you to terminate the relationship. That's being a little selfish, wouldn't you say? It's that, or you're gone. I will not change my views. I really don't think Brad agrees to this. I mean, he has a say in this, too. Brad has nothing to do with it. If I say no, he'll go along with it without question. Are you serious? Yes, of course I am. I know my son. Brad has always been obedient. He cares for his mother and father. Although, I was surprised that he picked a woman like you. But I'm sure you talked him into all this. I don't know what you said to him, but I know you probably tricked him. I'm sure if I have a little talk with him, he'll realize his mistake. Do you really think I tricked Brad into loving me? Why would I even do that? Oh, please, just pipe down, would you? I don't want to hear any more of your back talk. I was right. You really need more discipline if you're going to marry my son. I will allow you to marry my son if you agree to quit your job and have me train you to be a good housewife. If you can't do that, I will not give my blessing to this marriage. I'm sorry, my client just arrived. I have to go. We'll talk later. Huh? What? Wait a second, Jenny. Just have the guy wait. This is more important. Didn't I just say to give your future mother-in-law top priority? Jenny, pick up. You will regret treating me like this. Hey, Brad. When do you think I should tell your mom about my job? Uh, I'm not sure. I guess it all depends on your dad's situation. Hey, did mom contact you and say something? Yeah, she said if I didn't quit my job, she wouldn't allow me to marry you. Wait, what? Maybe you should take a look at my line conversation with her today. Probably way faster. I'll send that portion to you. Alright, go for it. Oh my god, what the hell is this? Doesn't she realize what kind of trouble we'd be in if you quit your job? Besides, I'm the one marrying you, not her. It's what I want. Thanks for that, Brad. Makes me feel way better. But no matter what she says, there's no way I'm going to quit my job. Or should I say, it's impossible. Yeah, well I guess she doesn't know all the details, so she'll say what she wants. Yeah, I guess you're right. We're just two people who fell in love and plan to get married. But it's really not that simple. There's that little point about your father that makes it complicated. 
Yeah, I know. I really didn't want to tell my mom about it so soon, but she brought up the thing about introducing this girl. My mom, the great matchmaker. She was always trying to introduce me to one prospective wife or another. Anyways, it all depends on my dad, I suppose. Maybe we should sit down with your dad sometime soon and discuss this. What do you think? Yeah. Maybe we have no other choice. The situation between you and mom is getting way out of hand. Probably better to strain this thing out ASAP. Yeah, let's do that. Thanks, Brad. Jenny, are you there? Or are you on your break and you can't talk? Just so you know, I called your office and told them that you'll be retiring from the company. Excuse me? I recently came into some interesting information. Apparently, you work for a company that does business with my husband's company. Is that true? Uh, where did... This makes everything way easier. I told them all the negative aspects that I learned about you ever since Brad brought you home. I told them straight up, if you don't fire her right this minute, my husband will terminate all accounts with your company. Hold on a second. What did you just say? What's going on? Mother? Why go so far? My husband's company is one of the biggest and most influential companies around here. I figured your company was a mere subcontracting company, and you're just a lowly desk clerk. I'm right, aren't I? I'm sure the company HR department will contact you pretty soon, so you better be ready to accept the consequences. If you had just obeyed my request, I wouldn't have taken it this far. Mother, uh, I really don't know what you're talking about. Now, come on, Jenny. Look at the bright side. Now that you have no job, you can marry Brad, and I can start teaching you how to be a good housewife. What more can you ask for? I did you a favor. I can't understand why you would go so far to make me quit. It's for your own good. Okay, then. I guess I'll just have to terminate all negotiations with your husband's company. Pardon me. Cynthia, I know you've never worked a day in your life. I think that fact has worked to your disadvantage. What are you talking about? I have no problem with you being a full-time housewife and mother, don't get me wrong. But just because your husband owns a company doesn't give you the right to chime in regarding business matters. And I have to be honest, what you just did, that's blackmail. And you did it without even understanding the circumstances. I can't believe what I'm hearing. After all that, you still talk like that. Well, that means I'm going to have to give you an even tougher curriculum. You better be ready for lots of sleepless nights. Uh, I think it's going to be you who won't sleep while well moving forward. Excuse me? I'm not sure how you'll take this. Will you just sulk and give up, or will you deem this as a lesson learned and change your ways? Which will it be? It's all up to you, Cynthia. I'm sorry, but I have no idea what you're talking about. I can't understand you, Jenny. Why can't you make a little bit more sense and accept who you are? Jenny, pick up right this minute. We have to talk. What am I going to do? My husband just asked me for a divorce. He said that in order for the company to avoid bankruptcy, I'm an impediment. He said I would drag the company down. On top of that, he said that you, you're the CEO of the company my husband is working with. That can't be right, can it? Apparently, your company is way bigger and more influential than my husband's. Yes, that's right. I really hate comparing our respective companies. You know which is bigger or more influential. We all have our good points and bad points, but... Your husband's company is currently on the verge of bankruptcy. And with the loss of a major client, that may be inevitable. Why? Why did things end up this way? 
I would ask you the same question, Cynthia. Why? I really don't know. It's because you've been obsessed with status. Brad was slated to take over from your husband someday as president. You figured you were the head of the family, as if you were the first lady, so to speak. You even used the employees of the company as your own personal staff, ordering employees to pick you up in the company car and take you shopping or to a luncheon with friends. I heard you even had employees come to your house to clean up and cook. Some even complained that you yelled at them, demanding that they take priority for you rather than the company. As a result, several key employees ended up resigning. The company was left with an inadequate workforce. They were not able to continue projects that were prematurely postponed due to the resignation of some of those key project managers. Well, subsequently, it had adverse effects on some of the company's major projects. But I was only trying to... Many of those major clients had no other choice but to terminate their contracts due to lack of progress. That's where my company stepped in. We looked over the finances and future potential of the company and decided to acquire the company. Simply put, we bought you out. Bought us out? You mean your company purchased my husband's company? You own our company? Yes. I won't get into the details regarding the negotiations, but... Some aspects of your husband's company, such as experience and connections in the industry, would be an advantage to us. Your husband made the decision to sell the company to us rather than see it go bankrupt. I think it was a very hard decision for him, but it was the right one in my opinion. Bankrupt? Bought out? What's going on? I'm sure your husband kept this all from you because he knew you would do something stupid to disrupt negotiations. He kept that from me? I'm sure you noticed that company employees have ignored your requests lately. Your husband already puts the gears into motion. It was only a matter of time before he was no longer the owner. So he told his employees to pay no attention to you, to just ignore you. He did that? We conducted negotiations numerous times over the last several months. It involved your husband, Brad, who was slated to take over the company, as well as me and my top executives. In the end, your husband opted to sell the company rather than see it go bankrupt. As for Brad, we decided that he would take over as vice president of the newly formed company, a subsidiary of my company. Brad is going to be vice president of this company? And who's going to be the CEO of this company? That would be me, for now. Well, it should be Brad! That was not solely my decision. It was voted on by the board of members. A sound business strategy. Well, during this time, Brad and I started seeing each other on occasion. First, it was all business, but gradually we got to know each other. Well, you know the rest. And that's where we are right now. If that's the case, uh, could you talk to my husband and ask him to rethink this divorce? <laughs> you want me to persuade him? Yes, that's right. It's the least you can do for me. If you do that, I'll let you work for however long you want, and we can forget all about that housewife training, and I'll give you permission to marry my son Brad. What do you say? I don't need your permission to keep working or to marry Brad. I'll do as I please. Pardon me? How could you say that? I wish you would get this through your head, that you have no power to change any of this. Please, Jenny, don't be that way. Listen to me. I believe your lawyer is on the way to discuss your divorce. You're probably pretty busy, so I'd better get going. Bye! Two months later, we welcomed some new staff members to our company. Several members from the newly acquired company and our team started working together, and things got off to a great start. As for Cynthia, the divorce proceedings went through without a hitch, with her husband providing her with a reasonable financial package, and even introducing her to a fairly good employment opportunity, but... On her first day on the job, she took an overly long lunch break without permission and got fired on the spot. 
She's never worked a proper job before and does not possess any sort of work ethic, it seems. So all she had to live on was her modest divorce money, but that hit rock bottom pretty quick. She ended up coming to me and Brad for help, but Brad brushed her off. She had no choice left but to return to her parents' place in the country. I hear she's living in some beat-up apartment there, working at some local grocery store, trying to make ends meet. Two years ago, I remarried my current husband. My ex-husband thought it would be easy to have a child if we got married, and when I couldn't have a child even after a year, he called me an infertile woman. After that, he repeatedly cheated on me. I was secretly preparing for divorce, and when I was ready, I went to a lawyer. My ex-husband wanted to marry his girlfriend, and I wanted to divorce him as soon as possible. So we both agreed to get divorced, but... Kathleen! Oh, Ryan, it's been a while. What's up? What is that? What are you talking about? Facebook. Oh, what about it? I didn't know you were on Facebook. I just started, and then I found your account. What the hell is that? I said, what are you talking about? You had a baby? I mean, why didn't you tell me you got married? Why should I? We've been divorced for three years now. We're strangers. You should. We'd been together for years. Don't call us strangers. I don't care if you remarry or not. Ugh, right. That's what I didn't like about you. You always act like you have nothing to do with it. Seriously, I should have never married you. All the time we spent together, even a few years, was a waste. How dare you say that when you didn't care about me while we were married? You divorced and then quickly remarried. So why don't you just focus on your own family? No way. I saw on Facebook and it looks like you remarried within a year after the divorce. You were connected to your current husband before you got divorced, weren't you? Ha ha ha, I knew you'd say that. You're so simple. Huh? What's so simple? Don't think me as you, okay? You wanted to marry your girlfriend so badly that you waited all the time for me to divorce you, right? So you think I was doing the same thing, huh? You really are simple-minded or you lack imagination. That's not true. If the person who cheated asks to get divorced, there will be a big fight and it would be very difficult to get divorced, huh? That's why you waited until I couldn't take it anymore and wanted to divorce you no matter what. For three years. Oh yeah, whatever. Otherwise, who would like to stay married with an infertile woman for three years having sex with her that I don't want to? You were an infertile woman, but I wanted kids, so I made a new girlfriend. But I still had sex with you twice a month, which I didn't want to because I thought we might have a baby. A sex that doesn't feel good feel nothing. You're an infertile woman plus a bitch who don't do anything during sex. You son of a bitch. That's how you felt? Wow. I mean, how can you say so many specific bad things about me after three years? You're wasting so much brain capacity on useless things. So the rest of it is so naive. Shut up. I married you because I wanted kids. You yourself are a good-looking, smart CPA and raised by a fine family. You met all the requirements to be the mother of my children. And guess what? We tried to make a kid, but you never seemed to be able to have one. Meanwhile, you get old and the eggs deteriorate. Oh, so that's why you had an affair with a young, beautiful, talented girl. Well, yeah, of course. I was seeing a bunch of girls just to find the best genes. 
Isn't that a natural male instinct? It sounds better if you say so, but, but I'm not sure if it's a rational human behavior. So what? It took time, but we were able to get divorced. You didn't ask for anything else. I was going to remarry immediately and have a child with my young wife. And yet, I have a child and you don't. I see. That's why you were in such a hurry to get in touch with me. I wondered why, but it makes sense now. I thought you were an infertile woman. You lied to me, didn't you? Huh? Why would I do that? I can't think of any other reason. It has to be it. We had sex twice a month for three years. Twice a week at the most. I made time in my busy schedule to have sex with you, even though you had no approach. It's funny how that infertile woman had a baby as soon as she got remarried. You were actually on birth control when you were with me, weren't you? You made fun of me. What's wrong with you? I heard there are contraceptives that women can use besides condom. You didn't want to have my baby, so you wore it secretly. You're too overthinking. No way. You would lie, of course. Or a contraceptive pill? You didn't want kids that badly? You know what? I did want to have kids too. That's why I never used contraceptive things or refused to have sex in the first place, right? I don't know. Maybe you just wanted to feel good. I've got the best technique in the world, you know. What's with that confidence? Don't worry, you're so bad at it. What? You were so bad at it that I had to endure it. It was more like a painful time than a pleasurable one. What do you mean? You say yourself as sadist and you force a woman to be masochist, but you're not aggressive enough. I don't get wet and it hurts. And you could only stand it for a few minutes, and it will finish in fifteen minutes. How can I feel good? What? You're just insensitive. Don't blame it on me. The other girls don't say anything, and my wife, of course. I'm sorry to hear that. She can't tell you if she wants to. She's not like you. Using Facebook, Instagram, she's not a bitch like you. She's more modest. Whatever. Then why did you start Facebook? You've always been too lazy to do it. And what are you up to now? Everyone around me were using it, so I thought I'd give it a try. Nothing special. Is that so? You were using Tinder at that time. Just because you can't have any kids, aren't you doing the same thing all over again? You're already old. I'm amazed. Don't talk nonsense. It's none of your business. Huh? It's a big deal. Ryan, what does my occupation say on my Facebook? Huh? Smith CPA firm. What's this? My current husband is also a CPA. That's why we started our own firm. Hmm. So. I don't know if you're trying to show me off how much you make money, but I don't really care. I guess a woman like you, who's like a nerd and has no charm, is better suited to a man like that. Yeah, you're perfect for each other. Thank you very much. And your wife is coming over to my place for a part time. What? What are you talking about? She doesn't have any qualifications. Why is she working for you? My current wife works for my ex-wife. Are you kidding me? I don't understand. I know it's hard to become a CPA, but she's taking the exam and trying to pass all subjects. She's great. She studies on her own. I think she's going to pass all the subjects this year. Huh? For what? I haven't heard a single thing from her. That's how little you see of her. It's exactly the same as when you were with me. To begin with, it's extravagant for a nearly forty years old man to take a twenty-two year old college student as his wife and want to have kids with her. 
an old man who gets a college student involved in an affair. It's gross. Gross? It's natural that young women fall for guys who are in their 40s. Natural? You're trying to justify yourself in a way that I don't understand, and that's exactly what gross means. Don't say I'm gross. I'm hot. Don't make me laugh. She said you tricked her. I tricked her? She came all the way over to your ex-wife's place. She must have been really pissed off at me. She asked me to pay you back the property division and give you back the apartment. Um... You told her that I stole all of your property division. And that I took your apartment? I guess that's what you had to say. You spent so much money on girls that your savings were empty. We had to share our savings after we get married, but you didn't share them at all. You were a man who was having an affair and playing around with other girls. And you said you didn't need to divide the property. And now you're saying I have to share the money I earned? No matter where you look in the world, no one will accept that. I mean, we were supposed to share the property, but you couldn't, so I had to use my savings. And you lied about the apartment that belonged to me, saying that it was yours and I stole it? It's the fact that you kicked me out. Yes. I worked hard for this house and I paid the entire mortgage with my own money. And you just came to my house and said, lucky me, I don't have to find for a house. You were lucky to be married by me when you were 30 years old and had no one else to be chosen, huh? If you had stayed like that, you would have been single, poor, and lonely for the rest of your life. You were a sellout, and I took you in. You should be grateful. No, I could have married someone else, even if you hadn't found me. I'm different from you. I was just prioritizing my career as a CPA. Don't talk big to me like a man who used something and could only get a college student who knew nothing by tricking her. That's why you're getting dumped by women again. Being dumped? You haven't noticed? Notice what? She's been preparing for over a year. Huh? Preparing? I don't get it. There's no way I'm getting dumped. My wife is in love with me. You seriously haven't noticed? She's preparing to get divorced. What? Why would she think so? Well, if you're chasing girls on Facebook and Instagram, you wouldn't notice. You're not paying attention to her at all. Like I said before, she's trying to become a CPA. And she has been thinking about it since she was young. You have a good eye for women, but too bad. What's that? You're good looking until you get her, but after you get her, you become an asshole. And since you get a smart girl, she's not going to put up with your shit. She becomes an independent woman. In a way, you motivate people. Oh, but you're also a useless bug fucker. What? Watch out for your words, you infertile woman. I can dump that infertile woman who's only young and looks better than others. No money, no brains, bug fucker. Oh, no sperm? I do have them, like too much. Oh really? I thought you didn't because you have sex a lot but nothing happens. You can't keep letting them rot just because you have so many. If you're going to be so bossy, why don't you start by showing some results? You. On top of being a dickhead, you trick and cheat on people. And I heard you've been on a long business trip recently. She even told you about that? That big mouth. You can play as much as you want. She's also lucky to have a lot of time to prepare. Prepare? Prepare for what? Are you stupid? Did you hear me? To get divorced. Huh? With a CPA degree at that young age, getting a job is a piece of cake. She's from a good university. She's got excellent grades. And if she works hard, she can become a very profitable CPA. You're just a disappointing person. I feel sorry for you. She's going to make more money than you in no time. Also, it's only a matter of time before you get dumped. 
You really pissed me off. If you have time to be pissed off, be a smart person. Are you so stupid that you don't notice the changes in a wife you've been with for years? You can't be a parent for the rest of your life. Your kids won't choose you. Don't get carried away just because you could have kids. I can have a kid in no time. Don't get all condescending. I'm just telling you the truth. Why don't you worry about yourself instead? When are you coming home? Next week. Oh, maybe it's too late. What do you mean? The house might be empty. What? What do you mean by that? I think she's going to leave you. You know what? Huh? Don't underestimate women. What? We are stronger than a dickhead like you. Live in regret and spend the rest of your life alone. Well then. What do you mean? What did you say? Kathleen, hey. After that, Ryan came back from his business trip in a hurry and found out that the house was already empty. He found a letter regarding the divorce in the dining room. He called his wife immediately and shouted at her. But when she told him about the proof of his affair and deception and the lawyer I had prepared, he easily accepted the terms and signed the papers. One year later, she passed the CPA exam and now is working as a CPA at my firm. Ryan is still paying the property division in installments every month and he is looking for a new wife. And he wants to marry someone in her early 20s. He still has to pay millions of dollars, but when will it end? Will he have a wife by his side by then? In the first place, has he forgotten that he had a fertility test? He would be a fool to be satisfied with what he had undergone without knowing the result. When will he realize that he really is sterile?